If you've ever wondered how to paint white flowers on white watercolour paper, then stick around because I'm going to show you how. I've done a really simple outline of my flower here. This is a, a white anemone flower and I begin by applying a really simple wash to the stem of the anemone like this. I'm using a watery mix of Davies Grey with a tiny bit of olive and as I work down the stem I'm adding a tiny bit more olive green to give it that kind of yellowy tone that we see on the stalk. While I'm waiting for this to dry I just add a tiny bit of Indian yellow where I think it is needed just to give some of that yellowy tone that we see on some of the petals. All of the materials that I'm going to be using today I will list in the description box underneath this video. I'm actually painting on 50% cotton 300 GSM paper and it's A4 sized. The next colour that I'm using is a watery, a very watery mix of ivory black and I'm applying this to the areas that you can see here using my number one round brush. This one is synthetic and it's from Etcher. The little ceramic palette that you see to my left is also from Etcher and as I said I will list everything in the description box underneath this video. Next up we have another watery mix of Davies Grey and I'm applying it really carefully so that I don't overwork my greys and make my painting look too heavy handed. It's really important that you keep these grey tones really subtle and work through them bit by bit building them up slowly. This is a watery mix of ivory black and I'm applying this to this section of the petal where it hits the adjoining petal to give the idea of it being in shade and giving it a little bit more shape and a little bit of form. wiggling my brush to create this kind of texture on the petal and then cleaning it in my little petal of water and blending it through. Make sure that you pat your brush dry on your kitchen paper before you do this otherwise your paint will bloom. Watercolour is all about building up your colours slowly and carefully to make sure that you don't overwork your painting. It's really important that you put your lighter values in first, that's your lighter colour washes, so that when it comes to your darker values, you know exactly where you're going. So I'm mixing, uh, using a mix of Davies Grey and watered down ivory black, as you can see here, and I'm flitting between each of the petals in turn. I'm mixing a watery mix of a mixture of olive green and sap green here and I'm applying it all over the leaves like this. When this dries this will form our base layer and we will build on it later but it's really important to get that base colour in so that we can start to build up our colour as we work through. Now you may have noticed at the start of this tutorial that I've said that we would have a free reference photograph and line drawing so if you are worried about drawing freehand don't worry you can trace it down. There are a couple of ways that you can have access to these so let's find out. We have a couple of ways that you can access our free reference photographs and line drawings. We have our very own private Facebook group and as a member you can access all of them here. There is another way and I'll tell you about that in a moment and in case you're not a Facebook fan and I know it's not for everybody. I just want to reassure you that our group is really friendly, really helpful and informative and you can also post up your finished paintings and have feedback from me and our other group members. You can see here some of the completed works in the student gallery. Having positive feedback from your paintings is a great way to learn and a really amazing confidence booster. If this is something that interests you, I'll put a link to the Facebook group in the description underneath this video. But if Facebook really isn't for you, then don't worry because I'll put a screenshot of the line drawing and the reference photograph right at the end of this video. So be sure to stay right until the end and you can print it off that way. This is a mixture of sap and olive. And as I said, I'm taking this color all over the leaves and of course the little bit of the stalk that you can see here. 
I haven't stayed true to photograph for this painting. I just decided to add a couple of leaves and a little bit of detail here and there that may not be absolutely true to the photograph. Okay, so this is a tiny, tiny wash of Indian yellow and I'm adding these to the stamen as you can see. I think I should have used my smaller palette at this point. These palettes come in a pack of two. They're ceramic and they don't stain and they're amazing. These are from Etcher. And as I said, I will link everything that I'm using, um, all the paints, all the materials in the description box underneath this video. Here I'm mixing um, sap green, olive green with a tiny bit of burnt umber to darken up that value. Now that everything's dry, I can start to put in a bit of detail on the leaves. So what I'm doing here is painting negatively, which means I'm using my number one size brush, adding some darker value to the color that we've already applied and just creating veins by painting around them. It's really, really simple to do. Just take your time and have a steady hand using a kind of patting motion to create these veins. You'll see here that I'm just leaving this tiny gap and then painting around them like this. As I said earlier on, I'm not going strictly true to the photograph. I'm just giving the illusion to the viewer that there are some veins there and um, I'm not painting them all in because it would be too stressful and too time consuming. I'm dropping the darker color in here whilst the paint is still wet. Now this is a really simple botanical painting and although all our tutorials here on YouTube are full length, if you'd like to level up your botanical painting and learn how to do it in a lot more detail, we have a Patreon site where we create brand new full length tutorials every single month. You won't find them here on YouTube. They are exclusive to my patrons. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more about them, here's how you can join. All of our tutorials on YouTube are free and full length, but if you really love the idea of botanical painting but are not sure where to start, then you may want to head over to our Patreon where we post brand new botanical painting tutorials every month. We have different membership levels to suit you. And of course, you won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube and they are free of those annoying ads. So if you want to learn how to paint botanicals that you can be proud of, then I will link it in the description below. And it's also a way for you to support my channel. Do consider joining us and I will link it in the description box underneath this video. So continuing with this process, just adding the greens that I've mixed up on my palette. So once again, a mixture of olive and sap, and I've also added a tiny bit of ivory black. We are working with just a few colors today. You don't need an awful lot of paint to join in with our tutorials. And I always say, use what you have. If you haven't got the colors that I'm using, invariably there will be something very similar within your own set of paints. And if you are struggling, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to help you out. You can see I'm using the same method as before by just painting negatively around some of the veins that you can see me doing here. We are also on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour. Do join us there. We do behind the scenes postings and we have some fun reels. And we also let you know what's coming up here on YouTube. If you are enjoying this video, do consider subscribing. We launch new tutorials every Tuesday and hit that bell notification. That way you'll be notified every time we do a new upload and you won't miss out on new content. You may also want to consider hitting that like button. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it really does help to support me. I'm just using a damp brush here to merge the colors together. When watercolor dries, it can leave a kind of untidy mark. So I tend to use a damp brush to just sharpen up any edges that I feel are looking a little bit messy. So I'm using the tip of my brush here to add that darker color and dropping it in where I feel it is needed, just to give some extra depth of color to the leaf. It's really important when painting with watercolor that you make sure that all your layers are dry before attempting to apply the next layer. So just be a little bit patient with it. Generally speaking, it doesn't take very long to dry. I'm mixing burnt umber here with a tiny bit of, um, this is Indian yellow that you see me applying this tiny little palette here, this tiny little part here, and just applying the Indian yellow to the stamen in the middle and dropping in some burnt umber to the outside just to add a little bit of detail here and there using my number one size brush. 
brushes that I'm using today are from Etcher and they are synthetic brushes. I really love them, they've got a fine point and they make the paint really easy to control. This is a watered down version of the green colour that you can see me adding here with a tiny bit of watered down black just to add a bit of detail here and there. When you're painting white flowers with watercolour it's really important to remember to keep your grey tones really subtle. You don't want your painting to look like a grey flower, you want it to look like a white flower but with lots of tonal variations. So just um, change the different values of your greys as you work through by adding more water if you feel you need to, but keep in mind that you need to keep them really subtle. That said, I'm using a darker colour here just where this little fold is. This is just ivory black on its own, using the very tip of my brush to apply that colour. And once again, I will blend it through like this by cleaning my brush, patting it dry and just blending it this way. Where I applied that pale grey colour earlier on, I know exactly where I'm going now, so I'm just putting a darker colour on top of this and blending it through. This takes away all the stress of painting and it just means that you know where you're going to be applying your darker colours. And blending it through as normal and just enhancing some of the darker colours here and there. As I said, be careful, you don't want to go too heavy handed with this because you don't want it to look like a grey flower, you want it to look like a white flower with a bit of tonal value, a tonal variation and tonal contrast. Going over the colours that I've already applied with that ivory black and blending them in like this. Using a pattern motion. And you can see how that blends that into the paper and just enhancing some of the values here and there. And using some water, just some plain water to blur these colors together. Just using plain water to glaze over everything and now that everything's completely dry and we know exactly where we're going with the colours, I'm applying Davies Grey with a smidgen of olive over the top part of the stem and adding some yellow and some green on the base. And just merging these colours together with a bit of olive green. So you can see it starts off with that lovely grey tone and ends up with this lovely yellow tone at the base. Now at the moment our stem is looking a little bit flat and you'll notice from the photograph that there are some sort of hairy bits on it and we'll sort that out in a minute but I'm just blending out the stem like this because I wanted it to have a really really soft blur where it hit the paper and using ivory black to just continue adding a little bit of shading and a little bit of texture here and there using the residual paint on my brush to do this. You'll notice from the photograph that there are some little areas of rust on the anemone like this. You haven't got to put them in. I decided to add them because I think it gave this flower a sort of look of realism. So here and there I'm just adding a little bit of burnt umber and just blending it in. Just where I see these little bits of um, rust that are um, on the flower like this. So just here and there and blending them through with a damp brush. As I said, you haven't got to do this, but I think it just gave it another bit of realism. I just think it made it look a little bit more authentic.
This is a mixture of ivory black and the two green colours that we had. Make sure that when you apply this that the stem is dry because you don't want those colours to bleed into the wet paint. So make sure that everything's dry before you do this. You can see I'm just using the darker green tones to uh, sharpen up the outside of the leaves like this. Just strengthen in the outside there of that stem and now that everything's super dry we can start to think about adding the hairs on the stem like this. And you can see the kind of stippling motion that I'm using with my brush. I'm using um, a watered down version of ivory black for this, just patting it on like this, as you can see where that gray area hits the paper. So where we have our gray hairs hitting that white paper, we can put them like this. So just continue to put this color on the outside and I'm using Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White to add the hairs to the middle of the stem like this. If we were to put this colour on the outside, it, you wouldn't be able to see it. So you have to cheat a little bit and put the grey colour on the outside, but the white colour in the middle. If you don't have Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White, you could use a white gouache or even Chinese white. Again, you've, using this kind of stippling motion, pattern motion, and just randomly adding these hairs like this. As I come down the stem, just do more dots to create the illusion of these little hairs being face on. So just dotting them in and flitting between the white and the gray like this. You can see how this adds a lot of texture to the stem and I'm just using my flat brush to lift out um, a little bit of paint there. And using a mixture of burnt umber and Indian yellow there, stippling it in and blending it out. This really creates the texture that we're looking for for this part of the stem. Finally, just going over a few more details until the painting is complete. So remember to stay right until the end of this video where I'm going to give you a line drawing and a reference photograph and you can see how this final painting looks.